Run a race? Okay. Run, run. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so what we have here are two cars lined up to race. This car right here has a mass of 2,000 kilograms. And this car, a little bit older, a little bit bigger, has a mass of 2,500 kilograms. Now what we're gonna do for each of these cars is we're gonna look at the forces acting on each of the cars and attempt to determine which car is going to win this race. So, what we need to do is draw a free body diagram for each individual car. And what a free body diagram is, is a picture that shows all the forces acting on an object. So we'll start with this car right here. We want to show all the different forces acting on this car. In this case, there are in fact three forces acting on the car. The first force acting on this car, and sometimes the most obvious, is gravity. The reason I say it's the most obvious is because gravity is always acting on everything. And so there's this force downward by gravity. We refer to the force downward by gravity as weight. And weight we can calculate is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, even though this car isn't in free fall, gravity's still pulling down on it. So it still has weight. And we can calculate that as its mass, that's 2,000 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, that's 9.8. Now, we don't need to indicate this as a negative here because we've already implied a direction by pointing this arrow downward. Remember, force is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. So what we've done is we've shown the direction here by pointing this arrow downward. And when we work the math out, we'll find there's 19,600 newtons downward. Now, because this car is sitting on the ground, we know this car is not accelerating vertically at all. What that means is if we look at the sum of all forces in the y-axis, it has to add up to zero. There can be no net force vertically on this car. The car is not taking off like a helicopter or a rocket. That means something has to be pushing up on the car. Well, it's plain enough to see that there are four tires pushing against the road and therefore the road is pushing up on the car. So the car's not sinking down into the road as though it's quicksand. This is what we call the normal force. This is the force, in this case, by the road upward on the car. Because the car's on a nice, neat level surface, the normal force is at a right angle to that surface, so we get the normal force is directly upward. Now, if we want to figure out how large the normal force is, it's simply a matter of looking over here. We know the sum of all forces in the y-axis is zero. Well, that's the normal force upward minus the force by gravity downward. Those have to add up to zero or effectively cancel each other out. And since they cancel each other out, we know zero is going to equal the normal force minus our force by gravity, or our weight, which we already calculated, 19,600 newtons. So we find the normal force is 19,600 newtons upward. And effectively what's going on here is our vertical forces, they're canceling each other out. So they don't come into play in this race. This race isn't uphill or downhill. But what there is on this car is a force forward by the engine. Now the way the engine transmits that force to the ground, we'll, we'll get into later on when we talk about gears and friction and all that fun. But right now, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to say there's a force forward by the engine. And that force forward by the engine is 10,000 newtons. How that translates into horsepower, we'll get into roughly how that works later on down the road. For now, it's just a force measured in newtons. And that force is forward. Now, one thing worth pointing out here is you'll notice the larger forces, 19,600, these are drawn with longer arrows. This smaller force of only 10,000 newtons, that's a shorter arrow. On a free body diagram, we make sure to not only show the forces acting on an object and what direction they're acting in, we also make sure we represent the magnitudes of those forces with the lengths of the arrows depicted. 
Okay, let's move on to this larger car here. Uh, this car's got a massive 2,500 kilograms. So yes, gravity's still acting downward on this car, just like the other car. The catch is, in this case, gravity's pulling a little bit harder. There's more mass here. So the force downward by gravity, which is still calculated using mg, that's our formula, is going to be 2,500 times 9.8. That is equal to 24,500 newtons. So this is the weight of the car. I know you're thinking maybe weight should always be measured in pounds. It's not, okay? Weight is a force, we can measure it in newtons. Similarly to this car here, the sum of all forces acting on this larger car in the y-axis is still zero. So that means there has to be something pushing upward on this large car. Well, that force is the force by the road acting upward. Now, if you want to be technically correct about this, we could say there's individual forces on each of the tires, and um, we could even get into weight balance on, on the tires on the car, but that's going way beyond what we need to worry about in here. For now, we're just going to say there's one normal force acting upward on this car. Now, just like before, the sum of all forces in the y-axis is zero. Well, that's going to be the normal force minus the force by gravity. I say minus, even though we're talking about a sum of forces, and that is because gravity is downward. So it's negative. We're just sticking with our convention that we've always had that up is positive and down is negative. We've got a negative value here, and it should be a positive value up here. Now again, I know I didn't show a negative here. I implied the negative or the downward direction with this arrow. Regardless, coming back to the math over here, we get the sum of all forces is zero on this car. It's not taken off like a rocket. That means Fn minus 24,500 newtons is zero. And so we get the normal force on this large car is 24,500 newtons. And again, just so we understand exactly what's going on here, those forces canceling each other out. Lastly, there's the force forward by this big old car, which has a great big engine in it. So it's just going to be producing some force forward. Not 10,000 newtons, but 15,000 newtons. So force by the engine is 15,000 newtons. So what we've done here is we've drawn a free body diagram for each vehicle. Okay. We've shown the three forces acting on each car. And so as soon as this light turns green or somebody waves the flag, these cars tear on down the road. Now you might be wondering about friction. How does friction play into this? That's something we'll play with later on. Right now we're just trying to keep this simple and look at just a few forces at a time. We'll complicate this later. Don't you worry. So what I want to go through and do here is figure out which car is going to win this race. Now in order to do that, all we need to do is just look at Newton's second law. Newton's second law relates the sum of all forces in an axis to the actual acceleration of an object in that axis. So first let's look at the acceleration of this yellow car. Now I'm not concerned with anything going on vertically, we know everything is canceling out vertically, but horizontally there's a net force that is unbalanced. As the sum of all forces in the x-axis on this car is simply the force by the engine. And that net force according to Newton's laws, or Newton's second law, is going to cause this car that has some mass to accelerate in the x-axis. So all we're gonna do here is just fill in our numbers. We know the force by the engine is 10,000 Newtons. We know the mass of the car is 2,000, and that's gonna cause this car to accelerate in the x-direction. And lo and behold, we find the horizontal acceleration of the car is five meters per second squared. So, this is the acceleration of this car right here. This bigger car, well, it has more mass. So maybe it's gonna accelerate at a less rate. However, there's more force forward by the engine. So this car might still win. So let's go through and work out the math on this. Looking at the sum of all forces or the net force in the x-axis, we have just the force forward by the engine on this car. All other forces cancel out. That's gonna be equal to the mass of the car times its acceleration 
in the x-axis. So filling in our values, we have 15,000 equals the mass of this car, that's 2,500 times its acceleration in the x-axis. And we find that the acceleration of this big car in the x-axis is equal to six meters per second squared. So these two cars go tearing down the road. This one's accelerating at five meters per second squared. This one's accelerating at six meters per second squared. Well, it's pretty obvious this guy's getting ahead real quick. Oh no, I'm losing. Press the mic. hits the NOS, the engine all of a sudden starts producing more force forward. Now it's producing 14,000 newtons of force forward. This car is going to go ripping down the road. What we've done is we've changed the force forward on the car. So now let's go through and we're going to change this value right here. There's suddenly more force forward, so we're going to have, instead of 10,000, 14,000 newtons of force forward. This is a serious race for serious street cred. Got to win, because winners win. So we're going to find the acceleration in the x-axis, and we find that the acceleration in the x-axis is 7 meters per second squared. Hey, he's going to pull through. He's going to win the race. It's going to be great. Till all of a sudden... Oh, no. It's on fire. No. I win. The engine lights on fire. I need a faster car! I wanna race! Mm-hmm. <laughs>